Hello and welcome to another episode and today I'm excited I'm going to be talking about Little Nightmares. This is going to be a video review of Little Nightmares which I got last week when it came out. Actually first thing I'm going to jump into before I start this video review on the game is there are two versions of Little Nightmares you can get. You can buy the game digitally on PS4, Xbox One, and PC for $19.99 or if you're luckier, if you go to your local GameStop or you go on Amazon, they also have this collector's limited edition, which is $35, but it comes with a lot of cool stuff. So this is what it looks like. I have one right here, as you can kind of see. Uh, I'll take some of the stuff out on it too. As you can see, it kind of slides out nicely, like so. You get a figure of the main character of the game, which is actually kind of cool. I actually haven't taken the figure out yet. So you get some other cool stuff with it. You get some stickers, whatever. I also believe this here is a, I think this is a poster, um, but I haven't, again, I haven't actually looked at any of this stuff yet, so. Yeah, it's actually kind of a cool, creepy artwork poster. I'll see if I can kind of get it in the light here without glaring too much. It's kind of cool. You get a action figure of the main character you play in the game, or it's not even an action figure, it's just a little collectible figure, which I really don't want to take out of the box because it's it's just perfectly snug in there, but of the main character six that you play as, which is really cool, and then obviously you also get a physical copy of the game, which I'm happy that this is a real case, because for me, I'm always... For collector's editions and stuff, if I ever buy a collector's edition, and I don't buy them as much uh, anymore as I used to, but if I ever get one, I want to have either a real case like so or a steel case. I hate these this fascination with creating collector's editions that are like in a, a case that also doubles as a book. It just looks shitty and it doesn't look good on your shelf at all. Uh, also in the game, you also get the soundtrack CD as well, which is in here, and my game's actually in my Xbox right now. So I played the Xbox One version of the game for this review, simply because in the last couple months I've been playing so many things on PS4 that I felt like I needed to play something on the Xbox One. I actually just noticed this cool artwork on the back of this box too. They were out, an outstanding job for such a, a game with a small studio. Uh, and then Bandai Namco Entertainment published this, hence why they, it got a really cool collector's edition. This is really cool. I'm really happy with this collector's edition. And again, for $35, that's nothing compared to some of these bigger blockbuster games. This is cooler than some bigger blockbuster, you know, $60 games that have had big $100, $200 collector's editions. This actually is really cool, and it comes in fantastic packaging. But, but enough about that. So that's the collector's edition of Little Nightmares. Well, let's talk about Little Nightmares. So what is Little Nightmares? Little Nightmares is a 2.5D kind of side-scroller uh, horror game, essentially. Uh, but not not in a sense, it's, it's not really survival horror, but I guess the point of the game is to survive the onslaught of enemies, but it's not a survival horror game, it's literally just going from point A to point B. Uh, there are six different stages in the game. Little Nightmares excels at building tension rather than going for cheap jump scares. There is one really good jump scare in the game at the very end of it. I, I'm so numb on jump scares in games these days anyways, but this one was good and effective and it, the game felt like it earned the jump scare. There's too many games, like think of something like Five Nights at Freddy's or something where the whole game is built around the idea of jump scares. It's just a, it's a trope that's used way too often in everything horror right now. And I was glad in this game, the game takes its time building that tension between each level rather than just going for cheap jump scare after jump scare. The game's story is a little weird. It, I didn't really fully grasp what it was going for by the end of it but I enjoyed it. Basically, you play a six, a young girl who I assume is going through a personal nightmare uh, in her sleep, so this is kind of like her nightmarish dream, I guess, that you're playing. It's obviously not real, though. A game has a fantastic atmosphere. The biggest thing I compare to is something like Limbo or last year's Inside, which I actually still haven't played Inside yet. I want to, but I haven't yet. But the, the, unfortunately, it just it lacks the polish that those two games have. Uh, part of the problem is it's not necessarily even a lack of polish. It is the fact that the the studio that made this game, which I want, I'm going to butcher the name, but it's like Teresa Studio. It's a, it's a small studio. Uh, they used Unreal Engine 4, which has a long track record of not being a great engine for console games. Sometimes these games turn out well, other times they don't. This game specifically could really use 
a patch. There's a lot of frame rate issues, which I'll get into later on in this in this video. But the best thing that I could say going for this game is it has a great sense of atmosphere and sound design uh and the music and everything it's really well it's like it's like a mini tim burton animated movie that you get to play essentially and that's one of the main strong points of this game and it's really cool for that and i really enjoyed that part of this game quite a bit in which i'm actually going to roll a clip right now to to kind of convey exactly how all of that fits together so anyways enjoy this small clip of the game here really quickly Nightmares doesn't actually start as clean cut as a lot of other games that you'll play. It basically essentially kind of just you hit the ground running and you go. Uh, it continues this trend of 2017 games that do not hold your hand at all. It just thrusts you into the game world, which is which is something I've been appreciating more and more. Seasoned gamer now, like I I don't need a long winded tutorial explaining me the concepts of the game unless it's a genre that I'm not used to or something that's just completely new and unique. I don't need a long ass tutorial. This game doesn't have a tutorial at all. It's very much a limbo in that regard of you just kind of wake up and you go. The best possible aspects of, of this game uh, in Little Nightmares here are the chase sequences, uh, which lead to some of the best tension building I've seen in a game this year and even last year. The game features six different stages, no pun intended, and has various bosses that you have to defeat at the end of each stage in order to progress to the different area, but you don't really fight the bosses. It's more of you have to kind of get a key in an area and then open a door and, and sneak around them. Or there's one area where there's like a conveyor belt thing that you have to basically go into this room. There's like two really demented chefs. They're actually the chefs that were on that poster I just showed. Uh, and you'll see them in the footage that I'm showing in this video too. You basically have to run around them, go turn on this switch and then go back, jump up this big ass pile of dirty dishes, jump onto it and that's how you escape. But the tension that those things build is so awesome and it really gets you going in, in a way that many other games in this genre would just, it would just be jump scares all, all day, all night. In fact, if there's one complaint I'll have about uh, tutorial stuff, like obviously I'm, I'm glad the game doesn't have a tutorial, I'm glad that you just go, but the controls in the game are kind of clunky in that regard. Uh, there was one part in the game that I was stuck on for like 15 minutes because I did not understand that so I played on the Xbox One, you have a uh, the right trigger, or if you're playing on PS4, it would be R2. You hold that button down and that kind of grabs things. You can grab shelves to pull out. 
uh, like drawers and stuff, or you also, apparently, and I didn't know this, or I, I didn't realize this, you can use that to climb stuff, but I didn't, it did not click in my mind that you would also use that to climb a rope or uh, a chain link. Uh, like there, there was a part of the game where there was a chain hanging down and then I'm supposed to climb this thing. It took me 15 minutes to figure out I can just climb that. That was really the only part of the game that I got stuck on though. Two, two other complaints I have about the game. The depth of field in this game is really off simply because it's a 2.5D game, but a lot of times you'll be running across different things like uh, boards that are up in the air and you're platforming there, but it, because of the camera angle, it's a little bit weird to kind of judge your distance. And then also there's a lot of times where you're running on pipes. The pipes are circular like this, but when you're looking at it from this angle like that, it's hard to see exactly how to go into a straight line. So there was a couple times where I'm running and just kind of falling because I it was hard to keep on that path of just going straight. And that can lead to a lot of frustrating and unnecessary deaths in games like this. Final, you know, major complaint about the game is that it has performance issues. Uh, the major performance issues in the game are to the, due to the fact of extreme lighting and shadows. This game's all about lights and shadows, and it makes sense for a horror game. The problem comes in when it's trying to render all these different shadows that the frame rate just gets bogged down. It's something that I feel like a, a simple patch or two could easily fix those problems on the consoles. Uh, I only I did play this game only on the Xbox One. I have not played it on the PS4 or the PS4 Pro, so I don't know if maybe a Pro helps this game at all in that regard. I have no idea. Uh, again, it didn't hinder my enjoyment of the game at all, but it was noticeable enough that it took me out of the experience uh, the couple times that I saw it happen for sure. But the biggest thing that I have to praise about the game is its artistic style. The artistic style of it is awesome. It feels like a demented Tim Burton animated feature. Honestly, like I'm, I was surprised looking through the credits of this game that Tim Burton wasn't involved in this game at all. But you can see the passion from this team who made this game that they must love Tim Burton movies like Nightmare Before Christmas and Frank and Weenie or uh, Corpse Bride. Like these people love those movies and they made a game kind of like those movies. The only thing that's missing from it is the Tim Burton-ish music. It kind of has that a little bit, but there, there's only one real part where there seems like there's a real musical score. The rest of it is just dark, ominous tones, essentially. I really enjoyed the game. The game's length will depend on how, how good you are at platformers. It took me about three hours to get through the game. I felt that that was the perfect length for this kind of game. If it goes on any longer, you're just it's going to drag itself and wear itself thin, and you're not going to want to play the game anymore. It, it really struck a chord with me. I really enjoyed it. It's a game that I've kind of been following a little bit for a while. Uh, it was in development for a long time. It was shown off, I think, like two or three years ago for the first time. So it's been in development for a while. I thought it was awesome that we were getting this cool collector's edition. It's a fantastic collector's edition. And if you have any interest in this game at all, or you watch this video and you like my review of it and you want to go get it, I strongly encourage you to go and try and track down one of these collector's things before they're gone because it is really cool. But for me, I'm giving this game a thumbs up. I guess that's the rating system I'm going to go for games is either thumbs up or thumbs down. If it's a really good game, I'll give it two thumbs up. Uh, this game is getting a thumbs up for me. It's it's good. It's solid. I enjoy it. I really liked and enjoyed my time with it. It was a nice break from some of the other games that I'm playing right now. Uh, but it is not a perfect game. Do not go into this game expecting a 10 out of 10 experience. It's not that. But it's really good. It's really enjoyable. It's a fun afternoon distraction. Uh, and in a world where things like Limbo and Inside exist, it fits nicely and complements those two games very good. So overall, I really like it. You should go out and try it if you get a chance. If you got a PS4 or an Xbox One, I'm actually surprised this game didn't come out on the Nintendo Switch. Maybe it will later, but some of those performance issues, is it's kind of a thing where I don't know if the Nintendo Switch's hardware could handle this game because of the absurd lighting and shadow effects that are in the game. But overall... Really solid game. Strongly encourage anybody that has any interest in this game or maybe it's artistic style to give it a try and play it. Anyways, thanks for watching this video review. Remember to like, share, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. And anyways, until next time.